Hello and welcome to It's Your Business with Mario Taniguzzi. Joining me today is Leslie Ann Scorgi, who is founder of MeVest.ca. Thanks for joining us today, Leslie. Ann. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, it's been a very difficult time out there for many, many people uh, from a personal finance situation. Um, tell me, first of all, what's your sense of the state of uh, people's finances these days considering, um, you know, the COVID pandemic? We're seeing a couple of trends. The first trend is those who are still working from this group are emerging a group of super savers. These are people who have dialed back spending to the tune of 15 to 25% of their regular household uh, spending. So this is a very interesting group. Um, and I would say the fortunate group who hasn't had huge hard impacts on income. Um, then there is the group who are still working, who have chosen not to dial back spending, and they're just operating as if um, things are normal. Uh, and that group, I would offer a few words of advice, which is when times are good, you need to be saving a lot more than you were before. And then there's the group of, um, of Canadians who are uh, without work or maybe a spouse without work, uh, possibly receiving government benefits. We know the CERB is going to be transitioning to EI. And with this particular group, uh, we're seeing a lot of nervousness of what is going to happen. This group, uh, this, this group is receiving a benefit that's only $2,000 a month. And the last time you and I checked, Operating a household is, is a lot more than, than $2,000 a month. So we are seeing this group trim and cut and get very resourceful, um, possibly adding you know, a small additional stream of income. Uh, but I am seeing with this particular group uh, extreme resourcefulness, and, and that's a good thing. Why is it difficult for people to save? I think uh, what I hear is I don't have enough money or I just can't seem to break free from maybe some uh, past patterns of spending behavior. And we do know that when it comes to spending and budgeting, 90% of it is behavioral, it's money psychology. And so when you look at your efforts around savings, it is a reflection of old patterns of behavior, what you saw growing up, um, whether or not you feel motivated right now. And we know that if you can find some kind of internal motivation, uh, especially right now, if you can find any internal motivation, even just to save two, three, four dollars a day, um, it can really help go to make an effort towards like changing, permanently changing your relationship with saving. What do you think the key is for people to get started uh, in savings? So if you've known me a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of taking small steps. And specifically, uh, when I teach our, our large courses and our clients, we actually take a daily savings approach where they're very small, equivalent to uh, you know buying a coffee, for example. So three, four, five, ten dollars a day. Pick pick whatever number. Yeah, um, yeah. But it is about habit formation. And even when times are tough right now, you need to pick a number. You need to visualize a number that you can afford to save every day and when I refer to those groups of people who are still working and saving still working not saving not working and, and and not being able to save I would say across this group your goal here is to find a way to put something aside because the rainy day is here and we now know it's not just three months it's now six months. And when we used to advise people on what they needed to be saving, we used to say three months worth of, you know, your spending is, is really what your emergency fund should be. Well, we now know it's like six months, yeah, maybe even more. All this to say, I don't want to induce fear. I want you to be motivated. This is all about being motivated to do more with what you have, which is boils down to really good budgeting wanted to ask you about all the government support programs that are out there, right? There's a Canada Emergency Response Benefit, uh, for example. Um, you know, first of all, what do you think of, the, of uh, having support programs for people now? And, and one of the other aspects of this is, uh, are we creating also a society that's becoming dependent on the government too much? 
Well, we know that the emergency benefits were essential to keeping the economy going. We basically had a halt effect that took place uh, mid-March to beginning of April, and that is very, very bad for uh, businesses, for individuals, and it has the potential to crash an economy. So the benefits needed to be rolled out. Uh, I think they did that as expeditiously as they could at the time. Now, lots of criticism around, could they have done it more quickly? Could it have been more effective? That's not really what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about like, was there a need? Yes, there was. Did people get money in their hands? Yes, they did. But guess what, everybody? The, the party is ending. And when I say that, I please know it's with, uh, it's just with like my heart forward, you need to get prepared here. And that's what's most important. These benefits are not going to last forever. You need to think about the other side and the other side, we're hearing it from the government. We're hearing it from within the community and from businesses. Everybody, you have to get prepared. You need to get ready to go back to work. So mm -hmm. your second question about, um, and this is not a party, by the way. <laughs> this has been really hard for people. Yeah. Um, but my undertone is everybody, please don't be caught off off foot here. You have to take uh, you have to take some steps here to try your best to get back to work because these benefits are going to transition into EI benefits and they aren't going to last forever either. So whether we're creating a, an economy that's slightly dependent on the government benefits, I still see the need in the economy. We still don't have jobs for a lot of these folks who are working so hard to get back to work. Um, all I can say is keep it up. You've got to just keep focused uh, and when these opportunities do come up take them uh, because we all need to to get back to work one last question uh, and it's regarding uh, uh, some uh, you know government support and you know there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, guaranteed income yeah. uh, you know and, uh, and 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 who knows if the if the liberals eventually do um, uh, go to some sort of uh, program or system like that. What are your thoughts of uh, a guaranteed income uh, initiative? I think it is so far from reality. I don't think we have the systems to put it in place, but I know there's a lot of um, interest in this because we have seen just this huge and widening gap between those who have and those who have not right now. So I understand the premise of it. I'm a realist and I look at the ability to administer something like that and I don't see it on the near term horizon. So that would just be my flag for everyone is if you were hanging your hat on the hopes of this possibly coming to fruition soon, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Is it something that could happen in the future? Certainly, but you know, with the change of a government or um, just Canadian sentiment around this, uh, it could, the idea could go away or it could come into, into reality. I think it's just, uh, we, we don't have the ability to administer it right now. And, and that's why they're, they haven't gone to, to that approach. That's my opinion. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. That was uh, Leslie Ann Scorgi, who is founder of mevest.ca. This has been It's Your Business with Mario Taniguzzi. Thanks for joining us today.